When Devil May Cry was revealed to be having a reboot, there was a lot of fanboy outcry. Capcom handed the reins over to Ninja Fury who have only developed the lackluster Heavenly Sword and the underselling Enslaved. To add injury to insult to the fanboys, they gave Dante a haircut and dyed his hair. Ooh, shocker. Such silly criticisms have unfortunately brought it down in the user Metacritic score to 4 out of 10. I was shocked to hear this because this may be one of the contenders for 2013's game of the year. Is Metacritic to be trusted or should you actually experience one of the best reboots of this generation? My personal view on the terrorists is that they are disgusting, degrading, ghastly, sleazy, period, and generally nauseating. The worst of them is Dante. The whole world would benefit greatly by his non-existence. I'm taking you off the air. You think so? I wouldn't bet on it, you little shit. The retelling of Del May Cry story is actually one that fits into modern day society, unlike the previous games which felt medieval with its evil castles and occults. The game begins with Dante being hunted down by the demon Mundus, who has taken control of society behind the scenes with his news network and backdoor politics. But Dante couldn't give a crap about this, he's a party sex craved animal who couldn't care what happens till he's hunted down. He gets rescued by the resistance who needs his help to take Mundus out. This takes Dante on a path where he discovers who his parents were and his role in this universe. What happens to Dante is actually well written and believable, unlike in the original DMC, with a love story thrown into the mix with cheesy one-liners. This is him discovering who he really is. He may be cocky and arrogant git at the start, but by the end of it, you can see he's changed and will have gained the respect of the player. It's one of the better character developments I've seen in these types of games for a long time. Yes, some of the story plots and twists are obvious, but it doesn't bring down the story, but enhances the plot. With DLC content on the way to expand the story further, and a sequel being teased after the end of the game. You know this reboot isn't going anywhere, even if the fanboys hate his new looks. You and I see things differently. Seeing things differently can open new paths. What do you mean? You only see evil in me because I am a demon. Try opening your mind. It's all a matter of perspective. The world of DMC is a tale of two realms, the human realm and Limbo, a demonic realm hidden from the human world. Dante will get pulled into Limbo all the time by demons who are trying to kill him. An example of this is whenever he gets pulled into Limbo, the world will dramatically change. An example of this is when you enter a warehouse. Once you enter Limbo, the floor will disappear underneath you and change into a massive abyss and the crates that were stacked on the shelves will be floating platforms that you have to traverse. Another example of this is you have to gain access to a tower in the human realm, but that's impossible with the amount of guards on patrol. So you enter Limbo in the reflection of the tower that's in the water to bypass the guards. These are some of the examples of clever level design. I would give you more, but you really should experience it for yourself. You're going to go places you wouldn't expect. There are many secrets contained in each level and multiple playthroughs are required to find everything since you won't have the correct gear to access an area when you go through it the first time. Yes, it can be frustrating being teased with treasures you can't reach, but these games have always been designed for multiple playthroughs on harder difficulties. Another good thing is they've taken away the annoying puzzles that have been in previous games. They were always a burden and dragged down the gameplay. However, I can see some hardcore fans of the franchise being put off with the difficulties you have access to at the start. In the previous games, the normal difficulties were actually quite hard and the bosses were no pushover. In DMC they are a lot easier and I can see these pulling players off. I played on the hardest difficulty and died maybe 5 times in my first playthrough. You do eventually unlock harder difficulties where they reshuffle the enemies around and they gain new abilities, but this may be too late for some hardcore fans. There are some interesting difficulties you can unlock though. One of them is you can kill all the enemies in one hit, but you die in one hit as well. If you beat that mode as well, you unlock an even harder version where the enemies don't die in one hit, but you still do. Mondas will delight in me when I deliver his corpse. What do you think, little one? Should we play with him a bit first? You wanna dance? Let's dance! When you're not exploring the creative world in DMC, you'll be fighting lots of demons. Dante starts off with his sword and pistol, but you'll eventually unlock weapon transformations for the sword. From a demonic axe and fist, to angelic scythes and chakra blades. Each come with their own powers and weaknesses. You'll need to master them all and be able to combo between them quickly to defeat the diverse range of enemies. All you need to do is hold down a shoulder trigger to change your sword attack to a different weapon. Thrown into the mix is a grapple hook for you to drag and pull enemies to you as well. This is a diverse 
first fighting system and combat is fast, exhilarating and rewarding. You will feel powerful and in control, especially when your combo meter keeps going up in the ranks which grants greater red orb collection. These red orbs let you upgrade the range of attacks each of the weapons can perform. However, the enemies aren't going to lie down and take a beating. They will swarm around you and not just attack you one at a time, they will all attack you at the same time. From range attackers, behemoths that charge you down to support casters who protect the demonic allies and slow you down. Then there will be elemental demons who can only be hurt by corresponding demon and angel weapons as well. You will have to think quickly and be on your feet to avoid all the attacks that get thrown at you. But I noticed an exploit while playing this game by using the camera. If the camera is not facing an enemy off screen, they will not attack you till they get on screen. I managed to control a lot of the later fights this way by singling out threats. The other disappointing thing about the game is the bosses. They fall into the traditional attack dodge counter patterns which most gamers will pick up and be able to counter. For anyone who wants to replay the game they will find these sections repetitive and boring. I've also encountered a bug on the end boss where I couldn't actually kill the last boss and had to reload my save to beat it. You want to kill me? You can't kill me! I'm 1200 years old! You don't look a day over 12,000. You! You! Graphically, this is one of the best action games I've seen for a while now. It pushes the consoles to the limit. The worlds are alive and how the demonic and human realms bleed into each other is quite incredible to behold. The music has been composed by Neverland trio Noisia who specialise in drum, bass and metal. It gives the world an overdramatic, dirty demonic feel and it's good. Voice acting brings each of the characters to life as well, especially Dante who comes across very cocky and arrogant. Sound also amplifies the overall combat with voiceover screaming your achievements when you go up a rank in the combos. Capcom chose wisely to let Ninja Fury to relaunch the DMC series. They have done a fantastic job of rebooting a franchise that has not received much respect since Devil May Cry 3. You owe it yourself to experience DMC, even if you've not played any of the previous games. This is well worth the full price, but if you're strapped for cash, it will surely drop soon enough. Just don't let this one slip under your radar in 2013. It's easily going to be one of the games of the year.